people listen to us. The listeners listen to us. Just, just, just listen to us. Follow our lead. We know what we're talking about. John and Ken. Weekdays, 2 to 6. On KFI. Nothing says let's celebrate America like drinking beer and playing with explosives. Ow, son of a happy fourth. KFI and KOST HD2. Los Angeles, Orange County. Live everywhere on the iHeartRadio app. The feds are involved. I'm Andrew Caravella from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. The FBI is looking into a leak that exposed the private info of hundreds of thousands of gun owners in California. Law enforcement sources say federal investigators are now joining state agencies into the release of names, addresses, driver license numbers, and criminal information for civilians, judges, celebrities, reserve deputies and officers, and victims of domestic violence and those with restraining orders. The same sources say as many as 591,972 separate entries were posted Monday on the state attorney general's website. The AG's office says the information was up for less than 24 hours, but websites like 4chan had already acquired the data. In L.A. County, confidential information was exposed for 1,748 civilians, 154 reserve officers, 4 custodial officers, and 75 judges. Steve Gregory, KFI News. Police are asking for the public's help to solve a hit-and-run crash in Westminster. A woman was hit shortly before 6.15 Wednesday morning as she walked her three dogs. Commander Kevin McCormick tells KTLA the SUV that ran a stop sign and hit the woman is a newer model Silver Ford Explorer with no front license plate. It looks like there is a temporary registration sticker on the lower right corner of the windshield and there should be damage to the left front corner and possibly the, uh, the left portion of the hood. The woman was taken to UC Irvine Medical Center and her condition has been upgraded a bit. Researchers at UC Riverside say fewer than one-third of people in the Inland Empire have a household income high enough to afford a median-priced home in the region. We're seeing housing costs increase at a far greater rate than we're seeing wages uh, increase. UC Riverside's Tanner Osmond says the median price for a home in, inland, in the Inland Empire grew up nearly 20% from last year to $544,000. He says prices have gone up because there have been fewer homes for sale. A group of educators in Texas has suggested that the state replace the word slavery with the term involuntary relocation for a second grade social studies textbook. The Texas legislature passed a law last year to eliminate topics in classrooms that make students feel discomfort. The Texas Board of Education will vote on textbook changes later this year. KFI weather, 4th of July weekend we will see mid-70s and 80s for the beaches, Metro LAOC and the valleys, around 90 for the IE. Right now, Calabasas 72, Bellflower 67, Yorba Linda 71, Ontario 74 degrees. We lead local from the KFI 24-hour newsroom. I'm Andrew Caravella. We have a crash in New Hall on the northbound side of the 5. Just past 14, all lanes are shut down. Car versus the best being here. It's got to be jammed almost back to the 210 freeway. In Fountain Valley on the southbound side of the 405 in Warner, crash here has only the carpool lane open. Really heavy delay starting just before Magnolia. And in Ontario on the 15 north, transition to the 10 east. Watch out for a crash partially blocking the transition road. Not affecting you much on the main line, but it is causing delays right as you enter the transition. KFI in the Sky helps get you there faster. I'm Robert Tabucky. Each week on the Martha Stewart Podcast, the woman who's done it all from TV to magazines to radio and more engages in intimate, in-depth interviews with some of the world's most fascinating people. Every time I go anywhere, all they want to know is how new. You don't think I get approached all the time by people that say, Do you think you can get me a picture of Martha? You think you can get an autograph? Listen to the Martha Stewart Podcast on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you get your podcasts. If you're a valued customer, you deserve a simple gesture of appreciation from your credit card company. And that's why Discover matches all of the cash back you've earned at the end of your first year. Discover. Exceptionally common sense. Learn more at discover.com slash match. Limitations apply. At you lot. The prevailing opinion is, if you don't live it, you don't believe it. The people at Uline believe in hard work, and they live it by being there 24-7 to answer your call, having 38,000 items in stock, and offering same-day shipping from 12 locations across North America. Business owners, sellers, buyers, shippers, and packers believe it. Uline is the hard-working, dependable source for your shipping and industrial supplies. 
Visit Uline.com. Hey, it's Neil Savetra. Are you ready for summer? Wherever summer takes you, make sure you take KFI along on your adventures with the free iHeartRadio app. No matter how far from home you travel, KFI, all the music you love, and the best podcasts in the world will be there in your pocket. Sunscreen, flip-flops, and of course the free iHeartRadio app. All must-haves for any summer checklist. Download the free iHeartRadio app, and this summer you'll discover music, radio, and podcasts you'll love. So many people are so full of it this poll that you watch what people do. You don't listen to what they say. But we're in PC world now where everybody's virtue signaling and saying the thing that's appropriate in public. John and Ken. Watch what they do. Weekdays, 2 to 6 on KFI. You buy a, you, you do scratch off spelling? You don't, you don't strike me as a woman who's in there scratching off with her coffee and her donut every morning. The Kenny Conway Jr. Show. Weeknights at 6 on KFI. I learn something new from you guys every day. For all you people who think you don't learn something from this show every day. You're wrong. You're absolutely wrong. Gary and Ken. Weekdays at 10 a.m. on KFI. I know, I don't know why they can't say, we killed him, we shot him, and he's in the hospital. Uh, we tackled him, and he's in jail. What's with neutral arms? Yeah, you're right. They should say, we tackled him while in the custody, or we killed him. How come no one in law enforcement or government just speaks English? John and Ken. I'll tell you what it is. Weekdays, 2 to 6, on KFI. Uh, yeah, I'm not a big, I'm not a big, it's just cake. Oh, no, I'm a carrot cake guy. Uh, I'm, I'm such out. a weirdo. No, one of my favorite cakes, uh, you ever had a ham and cheese cake? Oh, stop it. Bill Handel. They're the best. Mornings from 6 to 10 on KFI. Sunlux has the Tesla ecosystem and power wall batteries. Get yours at sunlux.com. KFI, AM640, more stimulating talk. <laughs> To talk toll-free from east of the Rockies, call 800-825-5033. From west of the Rockies, toll-free, call 800-618-8255. To reach George via Skype, use Skype name George97313. Send George a text message anytime at 818-298-6521. From the City of Angels, this is Coast to Coast AM with George Norrie. And welcome back to Open Lines on Coast to Coast. We're going to go back to Barry in Louisville, Kentucky, who was telling us about his 97-year-old mother who passed away in April. She loved Gone with the Wind, and it seems like wherever he goes, he would see little remembrances of his mother through Gone with the Wind. He was walking through the mall, and the piano player was there playing the theme from Gone with the Wind. And Barry, I'll let you pick up that story. Hey, you decided to come back in the, the, to the mall area. Go ahead. Uh, yes, sir. So I was uh, trying to uh, stay out of the line of vision of the piano player at that point, so I didn't want to possibly influence the next thing she was going to play as I was making my way out of the store. So as I snuck my way toward the door uh, to lead me outside, she started to play the song, I'll Be Seeing You in All the Old Familiar Places. Oh, and uh, I, I broke down again and pretty much stumbled stumbled my way into the parking lot and George no one will ever convince me that all that was just a coincidence I uh there are I've no heard, there are no coincidences Barry you know that yeah I've heard mediums like John Edward and Teresa Caputo tell people just look for the subtle signs that their their loved ones are trying to send them a message but my mom's message was not subtle it was so clear and uh, strong, and it was like I was shot between the eyes, and it was badly needed, and I'll always hold on to that until I see her again. Thank you for sharing that with us, Barry. Appreciate that. Sure, Jim. Great story. We're going to come back and take the rest of the open line calls in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. Let's talk about Simply Safe. We believe home security should be the safest place on the planet for every family. That's why we recommend Simply Safe. Simply Safe is advanced home security.
that puts you, your home, your family safety first, and we love it. Simply Safe offers comprehensive protection not only against intruders and burglars, but against expensive home hazards from flooding to fires. And you can do a lot of the work yourself if you're inclined. It's that simple. With 24/7 professional monitoring, Simply Safe agents take action the moment a threat is detected, dispatching police or first responders in an emergency, even if you're not home. Simply Safe uses proprietary video verification technology so that monitoring agents can visually confirm the threat in order to get high priority 911 dispatch help right away. Monitoring plans, they're about a dollar a day, no long-term contracts. You can't beat that. And you can customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafenori.com. So go today and claim a free indoor security camera and get 20% off as well with the interactive monitoring. Go to simplysafenori.com. <laughs> If your family depends on your income and something happened to you, what would happen to them? You need life insurance, and SelectQuote can help you get it at a price you can afford. SelectQuote found Jacob, 40, who's in excellent health, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for only $19 a month. Not in perfect health? Don't worry. SelectQuote found Tanya, 40, who has type 2 diabetes, a 10-year, $500,000 policy for only $32 a month. We shop companies like Protective, Prudential, American General, and others to find you the company with the best rates. Give your family the security they need at a price you can afford. For your free quote, call 1-800-885-7755. That's 1-800-885-7755. Or go to selectquote.com. That's 1-800-885-7755. SelectQuote. We shop, you save. Get full details on the example policies at selectquote.com slash commercial. Your premium could vary depending on your health, issuing company, and other factors. Not available in all states. And welcome back to Coast to Coast. George Norrie with you. Let's go back to the open line calls. Let's go to Palo Alto, California, west of the Rockies. Anna is with us. Hello, Anna. Hello, George. How are you? I'm fine. I hope you are, too. I am. Good. What's up? Well, a couple of months ago, <clears throat> you had um, a guest that you were talking about curses. And you mentioned this movie that you saw in Prime Video called Dinner. And so I looked it up, and I'm blind, so uh, I usually have um, audio description on the movies that I watch, but right. this movie didn't have audio description. But you said in this movie, somebody put a curse on somebody and they withered away. Well, in the movie, I never heard anything about a curse. You know, there was a gypsy curse put on somebody, and he was grossly overweight. And then he started shriveling up into nothing. And uh, but but it was a purse. They in, in the movie they talked about it a couple times that it was a. He did something to a gypsy, and he ticked the gypsy off, and the, the gypsy put a curse on him. Now was this the, the the movie about this group of friends that got together for a wedding, and then they found out that they were they had a long time ago before they met they had been cheating on each other. No, no. Uh, that's that's not it. I can't remember the exact title of that m movie anymore. I'll probably. Well, I thought you said it was called Dinner, and and I looked up this movie called Dinner, and maybe that's not the same movie. Yeah, it might have been. I I'm not sure. I don't think so. Huh. Well, yeah. well, we'll get the name of it for you. Okay. You still listening? Keep your keep your radio on. My incredible staff is quick. It's called Thinner, not Dinner. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, there you and, it, go. and it's on Prime Video. That's where I saw it. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, then I'll watch that one. Yeah, thanks, Danny. <laughs> Appreciate that. I watch so many movies. I don't remember every. Do you remember every title you have to every movie you ever watched? Probably not. Probably not. A few of the classics. That's about it. Let's go to Mike in Denver. Welcome to the program, Mike. You there? Hey, George, I'm back. Can you hear me okay? I can. Where were you before? I think I accidentally muted my phone. So that's advice to anyone who ever calls in. Don't mute. Don't put your phone on mute. No, don't do that. <laughs> you can't <laughs> hear you on mute. Exactly. But how are you? I'm great. 
and I hope good. you are too, right? I'm doing really good. It's been quite quite an eventful week here in Colorado. You know, the Colorado Avalanche just won the Stanley Cup. That's fantastic. Yeah, absolutely. I had a really good conversation with Tom the other day about that. But, um, God, it's great to hear from Cornelius tonight. Tommy Thank loves you. hockey. I'm going to tell you a quick uh, Tommy story, real quick, okay. and then we'll go back to you. I'm in, I'm in St. Louis. I'm in one of my favorite restaurants. It's called the Cafe Napoli. And I'm sitting there having a few appetizers. And who is sitting right next to me but Wayne Gretzky? Oh the world's greatest hockey player. I'm from Detroit. Gordie Howe was pretty darn good, but Gretzky was the best. And Tom loves hockey, as you know. And I said, uh, Wayne, would you do me a favor? And he really didn't know me. And he said, what do you need? And I said, uh, my producer loves hockey and loves you. Can I call him and would you just say hi to him? And he said, of course. So we pick up the phone, we call Tom, I put, I said, Tom, somebody wants to say hi to, to you. He comes on and says, hey, hi, Tom, how are you? Tom says, who are you? He said, this is Wayne Gretzky. And he goes, no, it's not. Click. <laughs> well, but what a great oh. story. Gretzky, oh, great. he moved to St. Louis. Yeah, well, Wayne Gretzky, oh my God. I mean, I couldn't imagine actually having the opportunity to talk to him on the phone or meet him in person. I mean, um, I would have been nervous. You know, I was nervous when I met you, George. Um, <laughs> I would have been just as nervous when I, if I met Wayne Gretzky. When I go back to St. Louis, if I run into him again, I'm going to try to convince him to come on our show for a couple hours. I mean, in the, that, we're not a sports show, but it's, 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 it's a story about one of the world's greatest sports figures. And I want, oh, absolutely. I want to talk about what it was like when he was a kid. Was he good? Was he a good hockey player when he was a kid? I bet he was. Yeah, and that's one of the really special things about Coast to Coast is you tell people stories. You let them tell their story how they want to tell it, and that's one of the really special things about this show, I think. Um, I did have a quick uh, thing if we had time I was going to yep. mention. Go ahead. So a um, really important article came out today about CNN's uh, primetime uh, viewership in June. Um, they only had 654,000 total viewers on average per night. Of those viewers, just 148,000 are between the ages of 25 and 54, um, which is the demographic that is most coveted by advertisers. And, you know, I think it's not only interesting just because it's CNN, but it's interesting that, you know, the younger demographic is going away from traditional TV. And, you know, as someone who started out, you know, working in TV, George, I was going to ask you kind of what you think about that. Well, CNN decided to take a position, Mike, in terms of the format that they want. They started off in, you know, 1979, when I was a news director in St. Louis, we were one of the first in the country to provide Ted Turner video from affiliates in the St. Louis area for him to get on CNN, when CNN was basically starting right around that time period as well. It evolved from being a breaking news cable network to a network of opinion. Fox did the same thing, but uh, right now there seem to be more conservatives than liberals. And uh, CNN has, I think, in my opinion, gone way too far. Way too far. It's not, it should be balanced. Let people me decide what they want. That's what we do on Coast to Coast. You know, somebody call up and said, why do you got that uh, left-wing Howard Bloom on? And then another guy calls me and says, why do you have that right-wing John Curtis on? I give people an opportunity to talk about their views without interjecting, without screaming at people, without putting people down. And that's what we need in this society. We... Excuse me, choking me. Get a glass of water. Excuse me, folks. That happens every once in a while. But uh, back to you, Mike. Let's let's talk to you. We need balance, and I think CNN has lost that. Oh, absolutely, George. I totally agree with you. And that is one of the great things about Coast to Coast. Is it's totally from a center of the aisle point of view. You know, non nonpartisan. Which I think talk radio needs more of. I think we need more of that impartiality. Um, on radio because people 
have the right to decide for themselves, you know, what political view they want to align themselves with. And I think you do an outstanding job of presenting things in a bi you know, bipartisan way on the, on the show. It's so. got to be balanced. Thanks, Michael. And you're very astute for your age to be able to pick that up. That's very good. Let's go next to Louise in Louisville, Kentucky, also known as Cleopatra. Hello, Louise. George, thank you for accepting my call. You're welcome. <clears throat> I wanted to explain the meaning of the word neophyte, N-E-O-P-H-Y-T-E. Anyone who is a member of a Greek letter organization is a neophyte in the beginning. People who listen to Coast to Coast in the beginning are neophytes. It takes many years to learn the knowledge in order to go into the inner levels of the temple. So that's what we are. But then I want to go to my second topic, which is land of Atlanta. P-A uh, means land, L-A-N-D. It's written in the Greek alphabet in the hieroglyphic alphabet with two lines. The first line represents the female and is the agricultural land. The second line represents the male. But under the second line you have three little dots. The three dots stand for seeds that are needed to be planted into the female to nourish the people to grow the food. So it was very interesting to hear the caller mention how much uh, his mother loved Gone with the wind because mm -hmm. I love it also. Spent a year there studying it, going through all of the places where Scarlett went when she was there. They were real people. They were from Jones era, and her mother took Scarlett, uh, Margaret Mitchell, to Jones era. She said, Margaret, this is how the people lived before they lost their land. One other point I want to make. The father of Scarlett in the movie said to her, "Daughter, you're going. To, you have to love the land. Loving the land is like loving your mother." And who was Scarlett's boyfriend? Rick. Clark Gable, right? Yeah, that was a true story. I studied it and went to all the libraries downtown and out in the middle what'd of you, the. What did you, you think of Clark Gable? As a that, person as, or as, as an actor? As an actor. Oh, he was excellent. He could show emotion. He could cry at will. He showed how much he loved Scarlett. It was so touching because when he said, you know, maybe you'll have an accident and lose the baby. Well, you know, she fell down the steps and then he was in there crying. And I mean, it was it's so real because Margaret Mitchell got a lot of the parts of the real story in her book. I, I mean, I always keep going with the wind and the music I always play. Oh, the music's fantastic. And how, how long was the movie? What do you think? Uh, Almost two years. Enough at the time, you know, that was in 1939 when it was shown in Atlanta. Uh, it was it was appropriate for the time. It was what, three hours, something like that? Yes, yeah. yes, yeah. it was appropriate because people didn't have anything else to do. You know, TV wasn't around as so much. Gina, Gina, Gina's got it down to the minute, three hours and 42 minutes. Yeah, I went to, I, well, I visited the theater where it was shown. And, you know, she died in 1939. Uh, she, she was 39 when she died. Uh, hit by a car. Oh, going geez. to the movies with her husband. And then I know where the cemetery is. <laughs> you know, it's out on... Um, Hit, hit by a car going to the movie show. Unbelievable. Louise, thanks for being on the program. But I'm not sure people could sit through a three-hour and 42-minute movie anymore. People just don't have that kind of patience. Uh, they, they, they just don't. Ruth is with us in the state of Maryland. Welcome to the show. Hey, Ruthie. Hi, George. Thank you for taking my call. Yes, I'm in the town of Maryland. Um, and uh, I wanted to talk to you about a subject that you brought up on your birthday night. Okay. And something that we share, that we have in common, and I've never known anyone else but you that shares this in common with me, and I was so glad to hear you talking about it, and, and you are so honest and sincere, you make us feel so comfortable that we call and tell things, that talk about things we would never talk to anybody about. and. Um, I wanted to talk to you about the arranged marriage. You brought it up. Oh, my, about my parents. That's right. Yes. I also came from parents of an arranged marriage, and actually my marriage was also arranged, and I'm only 57. I was born in 1964, my first marriage. And 
I was just wondering, I, I can tell you a little bit about how it happened with my parents and with me, but um, I was just wondering, like, the nationality, the age of your parents, uh, and the dip, if, was there a difference in age, and did they decide when they were older or younger, because... My dad was six years older than her. Okay, and that's... Na nationality, we're Middle Eastern, mm -hmm. we raised as Catholic, mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, b both sides came over from the Middle East, and they settled in Detroit and Boston, Fitchburg, Massachusetts. And they so they, the families knew each other. And, uh, and they just picked. They just said uh, my dad's name was Gabriel, my mother's name was Georgette. And From a young age? Was it a young age that they chose? Or? Um, she was, I think, 20 when they got married. Okay. And so that would have made him about uh, 26. But did they pick them out at a young age, or did they wait till they were old? I think they waited. They waited until they were a little old. Yeah, that's how it happened. See, I'm full-blooded German, and I don't think they do this anymore, but I come from a very, very old bloodline. My father was born in 1904. I was born in 1964, so he was 60 when I was born. And it, and it lasted. They, they stayed married until my father died 11 years ago, and my mother's yeah, still my, going strong at 93. My parents stayed married the whole time, too, but... um. Yeah, um, my grandparents were born in the 1800s, and apparently, somebody told me it was an old German custom for Germans to try to marry their daughters off to older men, and that's what happened in our family. And my mother, her, my grandfather made an arrangement with my father. She was only 17, and he was like 36, I guess he was about 19 years older than her. Um, and he made a deal with them that if he married her and took care of her, that he would get the house because the house was in her name instead of his name and um not a bad deal on his part huh yeah usually <laughs> something too i had stuff too and then the same thing my sister and i i mean not that we were forced or anything but like um we pretty much were given away you know what i mean like right. they just let us like if it, it, we weren't they you know when they saw um so you, it mom, doesn't sound like your arrangement worked did it no, it didn't, and and it didn't work out. They, I guess they figured if you married the older man, they would take care of you. know, it was kind of the opposite. <laughs> but um, anyway, um, yeah, nobody in our family had any kids except for my sister, you know. But um, but yeah, they uh, he made a deal with them, and then yeah, I got married. I was only my sister was fifteen. I was had just barely turned sixteen, and my mom just signed off for us to get married. She just. They just thought that was the thing that to was, do. That we, was what, that's how they were raised. Right. We went along with the flow. And, like, um, you don't talk to too many people. If you're like me, you don't mention it to too many people because people don't really understand or they ask you questions or why. Like, you know, no, nobody forced, like, you know, forced me. But it's just, that's just how it went or whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. But I don't think they do that anymore. But I, it was an, somebody told me that was an older custom. It is an older custom. I don't even know if they do it in foreign countries anymore. But uh, I'm not sure they do it here. But uh, it lasted. It lasted years and years and years. And uh, they were very loving. I very rarely remember them fighting. And they raised uh, three kids. Uh, me and my two sisters. One of my sisters just passed away. And so it's just me and Gail. And we were all G's, by the way. It was Gabriel, Georgette, Gail, George, and Glinda. All of us had G's, and they used to call us the five G's. But uh, they were a very loving family, and um, they raised us to be the same way. And, uh, you know, they just, I, I can't remember them ever spanking us or anything like that. Um, they were friendly. My mother was the one who taught me how to play baseball and stuff like that, and I was pretty darn good in my day. But uh, she used to take me in the backyard, pitch, and I'd hit the ball. And I'd smack, you know, I'd smack the ball off the window or smack the ball off the brick. Finally, one day, I hit one over the house. And she said, you've learned. And then uh, off I went to Little League to do my thing. Anyways, we're going to come back in a moment here on Coast to Coast and talk about spontaneous human combustion. Why do you hear this story with Larry Arnold? It's amazing how people just combust. We'll be back in a moment on Coast to Coast AM. The Coast website is now conveniently optimized for mobile devices. If you're a Coast Insider, you can listen to live and past shows right on your phone. Just visit coasttocoastam.com on your iPhone or Android browser.
Andrew Caravella from the KFI 24 Hour Newsroom. The LA City Council has tentatively approved an ordinance to ban homeless camps within 500 feet of schools and daycare centers. Councilman Mike Bonin was the only no vote since the vote was not unanimous. The ordinance needs a second vote, which is set for July 27th. California may have to rely on fossil fuels to keep the lights on during the summer heat. The state gets most of its energy from renewable sources during the day, but doesn't have the storage for when the sun goes down. The governor's energy plan allows the state to buy power during heat waves, which would come from fossil fuel and gas-fired plants. A Republican state senator from Bakersfield says the energy legislation proves California needs oil and gas. Weather brought to you by all states. Fourth of July weekend is going to see mid-70s and 80s for the beaches, Metro LA, OC, and the valleys. Around 90 if you're celebrating in the IE. We lead local. From the KFI 24-hour newsroom, I'm Andrew Caravella. All lanes blocked in New Hall on the northbound side of the 5 to 14. It's a crash here with a car versus a pedestrian. That's actually jammed back to the 210 freeway. If you're a little north of that, it's a on the northbound side of the 5 just before the Cassaic brake check. It's only the left lane open here with the second improvement. They had all lanes shut down every while as well. The left lane reopened. It's a car fire that has now...